What's up everyone, Tom from the Airsoft headquarters here and welcome back. So we're going to do another five minute fix. Today we're gonna to be talking about face masks versus glasses versus goggles. So obviously the rules are simple. Try to keep this five minutes or less. We're gonna blow through it. We're gonna try really, 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 really hard. So we're gonna start the timer now. So face mask versus goggles versus glasses. Um, biggest thing about face masks is obviously they're significantly bigger. You buy everything you need as far as basic face covering right away in one piece and you don't have to worry about it moving around, shifting on you as you're playing. Um, this is generally what beginner players are going to go with and you know most fields are going to require that people under the age of 18 have eye protection and face protection. So for beginner players, this is normally something that um, they're going to pick up right away versus uh, having a goggle or glasses system, you still need your eye protection, obviously, and any one that needs a lower face mask are gonna have to figure out some type of, you know, face covering that is going to be acceptable. Uh, so I currently don't have mine, but some of the mesh masks that sit down here, um, let me grab a model. So a mesh mask like this, that would sit in tandem on the very bottom of the face, and it sits, you know, fairly well, obviously this is a packaging, but it's gonna sit like so. Um, a lot of times these lower face masks are going to be able to clip directly to helmets or are going to fit onto the back of the head. Usually uh, for people that wanna go this route, if you wear a baseball cap backwards, it is going to help retain the different straps and keep everything in one nice piece. So some of the disadvantages of full face masks are going to be with the extra material that's on the side here in order to protect the ears, you know, as it sits right here, this is gonna have a lot of extra material and it's gonna be super hard in order to aim down sights and it's either going to shift the mask out of the way or you're gonna to have to align the rifle in a very odd and unnatural position, which is not really such a good thing. Uh, with the plastic material, it also can obstruct your own voice if you were trying to communicate with any type of team, aim, team members or uh, other players. Um, the uh, plastic on the side here can also obstruct hearing anything um, and can create a type of echoey effect, uh, which is not super, super great. So that is some of the advantages and disadvantages. With the eye protection, um, this is obviously going to be significantly more minimal and thus you can get a slightly wider field of view compared to those of the full face mask. Um, you also, obviously, if you don't go with anything as far as a lower face protection, you can actually aim down sights and get significantly closer to your rifle. And you can you know, use your eyesight in order to actually aim down sights, which is the point of having the goggles. If you go with anything even more minimal, like these, these are my preferred goggles, obviously significantly more streamlined and thus I get even wider peripheral view. However, the disadvantages with this or even this is that it doesn't offer a whole lot of protection around the rest of the face. Uh, one of the other disadvantages, and this is going to be a case by case, but anything that's going to be a lower profile may not fit everyone to the best of their abilities. Um, so we try to bring in some of the I4 slims in order to fit lower profiles. But for anyone that gets larger goggles, there could be uh, several, a uh, little bit of gapping on the very back here and that could allow BB to get inside of here and bounce around, which is not what is supposed to happen. Obviously, everyone's going to want to get something that's gonna be full seal. Um, one of the things that people generally look for is gonna be a dual paint system, which we'll talk about in a second, um, but people can prefer going with a single paint, but definitely something that's going to be uh, completely encasing the face to prevent getting your eye shot out um, is going to be what people are going to want to look for. Dual pane, otherwise known as thermal goggles, are going to be a huge, huge help when it comes to airsofting. Um, a majority of face masks are going to be a thermal or a dual pane. And what that is, is, I'm gonna shift over to the side here. So if we look at the side profile of a goggle system, as far as breaking it down, anything that's going to be a thermal is going to have a interior lens and then it's going to have an exterior lens and then it's going to have a soft bit of padding here in order to create a little bit of pocket atmosphere inside of those two lenses in order to help mediate the internal temperature which is right by your face you know those waves of heat and then any type of cooler 
uh, exterior environment, try to create a, a snowflake. So what fogging does is it's a, a extreme of two temperatures that creates condensation. So having a dual pane system in order to help mediate those extreme heats and those extreme colds is going to be what prevents fogging. Other types of goggles <clears throat> or face masks are going to be a single pane, just like that. Single pane is the biggest uh, uh, cause when it comes to any type of fogging or condensation buildup uh, that occurs within full face masks or with uh, goggles. So a lot of times with people that run a single pane will need to apply some type of anti-fog material on the inside in order to prevent any type of condensation of sticking to the lens. Um, even when it comes to face masks or even goggles that have dual pane systems, it doesn't guarantee that there is going to not be any type of fogging that accumulates inside of there. So um, what will need to happen in order to prevent fogging if you do get a thermal lens, which I suggest everyone does get, because that is the biggest assistance when it comes to preventing fogging. Um, when it comes to the maintenance uh, of dual pane lenses, is you need to make sure that they're not going to be compromised when you're putting them inside of gear bags or while you're transporting them. That is the biggest cause of uh, breaking the seal on dual pane. So what I tend to do is with my lower profile goggles, if I'm going to a casual walk on game, I'll take my helmet upside down and I'll put my goggles inside of there. I always have a spare as well that will go inside of there and that just keeps my goggles protected inside of there. So nothing is gonna come down and crush them inside of my gear bag. If I'm going to a larger event, then I'm going to take an actual hard case like a softer ammo can inexpensive, they're like 10 bucks uh, at your local uh, hardware store or hunting goods store. That can just open up. You can just take your iPro, drop them inside of there. Maybe you have clean kits that you can slide in inside of there as well. And then everything gets locked up. And while you're traveling, moving around, nothing is going to get squished or broken or compromised. So that is what I would suggest if you do travel. Here, I'll use this as an example. Even with full face masks, it doesn't guarantee that there's going to be uh, non-fogging. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually get this to fog, even though this is a dual pane lens. Um, the biggest clue when it comes to figuring out if something is dual pane is look for a little bit of a border of the lens themselves. Um, and it's sometimes very hard to see see if I can focus in on this. So right there, you see that stripe right there? That is going to be a indicator that these are going to be a dual pane system. So put these on, give me a second just to breathe really heavily. You can see that I'm, at least, you should be able to see that I'm fogged up. I can't even see any type of details. So that is an issue when I'm trying to play outdoors with people. So in order to have something that's going to be dual pane and help make sure that it doesn't get cracked or compromised, make sure you're traveling and transporting it safely, as well as making sure that there is a clean lens on the inside here. If there's an excess of dust, smudges, fingerprint oils, stuff like that, uh, even scratches, if this gets scratched up, that condensation has something to grab onto on the inside of these lenses, and that is going to promote even more fogging and making sure that it stays there even longer. So after a little bit, the lens itself has cleared up, but it can go back to fogging pretty, pretty quickly. Now that is one of the issues um, and one of the things that can occur when it comes to full face masks. When it comes to goggles or lower eye protection, you know, something that's not gonna have anything that adds, you know, extra heat to the inside of those lenses is going to be more beneficial. So I can sit here and breathe for hours and it, these are not going to fog up because my breath isn't going up into the lenses. Um, but these still can fog up just due to the heat when it comes to the eyeballs. So again, even the lower profile goggles, um, you still need to make sure that you have a clean lens so any type of condensation does not hold on to those lenses. Lower profile goggles or shooting glasses, stuff like that, even though they are a, um, a, a full seal, having something that is going to be uh, single pane 
is it going to be a disadvantage as well? Um, it's going to depend person to person, but generally we see that single pane glasses do not work as far as preventing fogging. Um, when it comes to, if you want to go cheap and you want to get something that's going to be anti-fog, unfortunately there are going to be some solutions on Google such as Windex or hand soap, uh, which case, I don't know why you would put this weird chemical that close to your eyeball. Hand soap is designed for hands. I heard people that use dish soap. Dish soap is for dishes. Um, even some sites that suggest toothbrush. Toothbrush, or uh, not toothbrush, toothpaste. Toothpaste is for teeth. Hand soap is for hands. Dish soap is for dishes. Spit. Spit is not for glasses, especially preventing fogging. Uh, so what you need to get is you need to get anti-fog specific wipes, which we have here at the Airsoft headquarters and at the Airsoft arena. This is one of the best solutions when it comes to preventing fogging. You know, even some of my low profile I-forces, they are dual pane as well. Um, these have gotten dirty just sitting on my workbench. So getting those packets and getting just the buffer cloth in order to clean those interior lenses has helped significantly. So making sure you have dual pane, you have clean lenses, and you're transporting them in a appropriate manner. If you have any further questions, put them down in the comments section below. I tried to speed through that very, very quickly. Um, obviously, I may not have hit everything. So if you do think of anything, put them down in the comments section below. Um, anyway, we're going to be going over to the next five minute fix. So you guys take care, stay safe, stay positive, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.